Thank you uh, for joining us uh, tonight. I will just briefly introduce uh, what is going on here. Uh, this is a new uh, program series that we launched uh, last year with uh, Chalupetsky Society. It is called Cafe Chalupetsky, and uh, this series has basically two purposes. Uh, one is uh, short residencies of uh, international guests, uh, very often curators or uh, theoreticians or artists uh, whom we invite uh, to Prague to research the art scene and uh, meet with artists, uh, do some studio visits, uh, meet with institutions, representatives, and just get some kind of idea of what we are um, uh, doing here. And uh, their stay is uh, usually resulting in a short or longer uh, one evening uh, program. Um, this can be any kind of public program from a screening to discussion to lecture um, uh, or anything more experimental. And uh, this we already had about uh, six uh, previous guests in the last one and a half uh, years. And uh, today we are very happy to welcome uh, Pablo Jose Ramirez, uh, our guest from uh, Guatemala who is uh, currently based in London, uh, Pablo just spent a week here in Prague um, doing all that that I mentioned and hopefully enjoying himself. And uh, he, to conclude uh, his stay, he uh, prepared for you a um, pop-up uh, exhibition of uh, uh, video artworks, but also uh, the artists, some of them are present here uh, through a Skype conversation and he will lead you through a little more sort of interactive uh, program. And uh, Pablo um, is uh, a curator and uh, writer, researcher. Uh, he was uh, at one point uh, a director of uh, Ciudad de la Imaginación, which was uh, at that point uh, pretty much the only independent art center in, uh, in Guatemala. Uh, afterwards, he worked as an independent curator, uh, working, for instance, for uh, the ninth edition of La Biennale uh, de Arte del País. Uh, and then uh, now he uh, is a, a research fellow at Goldsmith University at London, and he's uh, working on his research uh, regarding uh, pre-colonial sort of resonances in, in contemporary art in Central and South America especially. I hope I said it right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us and uh, the field is yours. <laughs> thank you, thank you uh, Karina. And hi, thank you for coming. It's a real pleasure being here. Um, and getting to meet the city on these uh, few days. I just came uh, on Monday at 3 a.m. to Prague, and I had been on this very nice and intense week uh, visiting artists, meeting galleries, and now doing this uh, project that is some sort of, uh, of an experiment that I will, kind of, uh, I will explain to you about. Um, but first of all, thank you very much to the amazing Chalupeki Award uh, team. Uh, this female, uh, very like strong uh, team of um, of amazing women have been helping me here, uh, uh, like to understand this kind of complexities. Um, as Karina said, I am from Guatemala, but I'm living in London now. Uh, I have been working on the last three or four years on topics related to post-colonialism and contemporary art. And now on this new moment with Goldsmiths, I'm kind of trying to, to, to link, to understand maybe some kind of bridges, some epistemological, ontological, creative, affective uh, uh, bridges between uh, non-Western and Western art. But that means in a way also to understand what what is, what is the relation, what could be the possible relation between Eastern, Middle Europe, and Latin America, Africa, Asia, and, and then how we can build this sort of, of horizontal new connection with the Western world. And in this case, I have been working this through uh, contemporary art. That is at least the best uh, way that I know until now to do this. I, I don't know any other way that it could be better than this. So, 
Um, and then when Karina invited me, she, I, I, I proposed at the beginning some kind of speaking event, but then I was thinking like how to build this more, uh, um, more maybe to kind of take to the, to the practical performativity or something like that, this talk, and invite artists from different parts of the world that are uh, in some way addressing issues of borders, nomadism, uh, geographies. And I found like quite interesting also the selection of the artists because as you can see, I selected um, three uh, Latin American artists, then two artists from Central Europe, Holland and the United Kingdom, and a collaborative work between Daniela uh, Barakova, and Petra uh, Heretova, and uh, that is this work that you that you can see here. And the idea was to to kind of do this exercise that is is built on the under the idea of mistake. That's why we are having this computer here, and we are kind of calling, and the call goes down again and again and again. I guess that it's going to be like that. So. Um, and each of the artists that are connected through Skype meeting is presenting a work here. Um, and after that, maybe after we see the, the videos, we can uh, try to do this kind of conversation with them on Skype. For me, it was kind of interesting to understand how we can do this like transnational conversation that is, uh, that is being built on this kind of incommunication between languages, we are kind of working always between translations. So for instance, the, the work that is here of Manuel Chavajay, he's uh, from Guatemala, from a um, small uh, Maya Tzutujil town um, called San Pedro La Laguna. And he comes from this uh, indigenous rooted Mayan tradition. Uh, uh, so there is this kind of double permanent translation between Spanish and the indigenous language, and then to this event here in, in Prague with English, Czech, and so on. Um, and then, like for instance, the work that is on that screen, it's Adrián Balseca. He's from Ecuador, and he's uh, working on, well, it's more like a cinematographic project. Uh, he works always in between uh, cinema and visual arts, and he, he bought this car in Ecuador that it was built in the 60s and 70s, some, like the Volkswagen Beetle in Germany, that it, it was supposed to be this kind of popular car, like the, a car for the people. So in Ecuador, the car was named Andino, and then Adrian bought this car with no engine, and he's trying to take the car from Quito to Cuenca, that it would be like a, maybe like 500 meters away, uh, with no engine, so he's kind of appealing to the sol solidarity of the people that is on the way. So he's kind of pushing the car, uh, asking for people to pull it, uh, going down the hill, and it becomes this kind of testimony of this kind of vestiges of modernity and of this kind of unfinished mo uh, colonial modernity in Latin America. Uh, but then I realized that talking about geographies and and territories and nomadism was not just about uh, landscapes, but was also about this kind of digital presence of communication. Uh, uh, so I'm inviting Catherine Elkin, that is um, an artist born in Belfast, that is uh, there on that screen. And she's, she's working this, she works with TV and she tries to set these uh, scripts that she takes from BBC and from different like TV programs and then this kind of performativity of the scripts, she tries to take it to the present. So she's tried to read with this guy that is on the, on the screen um, uh, a conversation, an interview with Dustin Hoffman that they had like in the 80s. And they are talking also about this song, this is a Latin American song, Cuban song called uh, Why La Bamba. And then, um, well, also you can see here Daniela and Petra, as I said, uh, with this uh, very, very nice work uh, where they are kind of exploring these specific sites of their hometown. Uh, but they are, they, they belong, they have this kind of different relation with the hometown. Maybe you know more about it. Um, 
and well, this, this kind of uh, humor, uh, humoristic political kind of underlaying work that Daniela does that I, I just knew because of the Halupetsky Award. I was saying Chalupeki, or I said, I said it Chalupeki at the beginning. Okay, sorry, Halupetsky. Um, and then here you have to the right the work of Chasmine Beeser. She's from Holland, living in Berlin. And she's doing this uh, ongoing project called Surf Club that is, um, it works with an internet connection to, a, and it works through an algorithm. So what you see on the screen is kind of actual real time cameras around the world. So the algorithm works through some tags, like different tags, and uh, this tag refers to different cameras, like this kind of panoptic global contemporary view through internet and through streaming. So what you can see there are actually those views of different parts of the world working through the, through the algorithm. And here, but, uh, last but not least, is Javier Esteban Calvo. He's from Costa Rica. And I don't know if uh, some of you have been in Latin America, but uh, the, one of the main kind of concerns of contemporary societies is how to build um, uh, 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 more kind of like an horizontal relation between people uh, 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 despite the colonial relation, the recent colonial relations of power and like the recent civil wars, like in the case of Guatemala, we had 36 years of internal war, one of the longest in Latin America that just ended in 1996. So in, in some way, we're still with this kind of uh, strong presence of violence of symbolic violence also, uh, also marked through the color of the skin. So all the politics of blanchialization in the national states in Latin America have been very present until now. Um, and you can see this kind of monochromatic political construction of society where the presence of the white color of skin in ideological terms still related to the power structures of the governments and so on. And in the case of Costa Rica, it's a specific, like a special case because they are a middle class society. They don't have an army and they never have like an internal uh, uh, armed conflict. So, um, and they are this kind of small country. They were called uh, like 10 years ago, the Switzerland of Central America. So they kind of seem this kind of weird, whiteness, middle class country, but they have, of course, very like strong social differences. And when what Javier is doing here is that he have this kind of stencil with this mark of the sun, and what he's pointing all the time in this loop is the place of Costa Rica and the mark on the map, trying to kind of uh, make this white mark on the skin. So the idea of this. Pop-up exhibition was to build this chaotic pop-up uh, uh, unfinished uh, exhibition about geographies of different parts. And then having them like here on the Skype was kind of important for me, even though maybe you cannot see them like now, uh, but they are talking. Uh, and then they, with this uh, kind of exercise of, of connection. Then on the other hand, I, I wanted to maybe not now because I, I think that it's not the best place to do it, but to, to, to approach to the project that I, I have been working online that is still on development, that it, it's about the relation between day and night. And when Karina invited me, my main concern was what is that I'm doing in, uh, in, in Czech Republic in a way, right? What is a Guatemalan curator based in London doing in Czech Republic and, uh, and what, what I have been my main concern, at least in curatorial research, is what, what it makes us common, what, it, what are the points that connect us, uh, and if you see all the, like, the identity politics of the 90s and 80s have been about the difference. So now the idea, more this maybe quantic approach to politics, is what does make us common. And in that case, what I find that it makes us common is the relation between day and night, right? This is something that we cannot escape from. And then I started to work with this exchange of letters between John Berger. I, I guess that you know him. He just died like three months ago. He's this art theory, uh, British art theoretician that wrote this famous book called Ways of Seeing. 
So he was fascinated with this uh, a guerrilla arm movement in Mexico called the Zapatista movement that maybe you know. So John Berger started this conversation through letters with the Subcomandante Marcos, one of the leaders in Mexico, and they were talking all the time through letters about painting, about art, about what it means, this Van Gogh painting in the indigenous mountains in the south of Mexico and what that means in the countryside in France. So this kind of relation between day and night and how the world bond us together, it would be this kind of contemporaneity for me in a way. And it is what I'm trying, I guess, somehow to uh, show in this space so through like very, very different artworks. So now maybe the idea would be to invite you to, to kind of like take a look to the works. Um, most, some of them have sound so you can use the earphones and so. And then maybe we could go back and have this more informal, intimate talk. Uh, if you have questions, if you have like something specific to address about some of the works and then we are, they are connected here so we can try to ask them directly. I can kind of translate in some cases. And yeah, just have this chill and nice conversation. So uh, yeah, right, what do you think? Great, so we can just take a while. Yeah, okay, thank you. And then go back. Let's see if, uh, Adrián, are you, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Pablo. Okay, okay, so um, we're kind of, uh, starting kind of the conversation here, and I don't know if you can just tell us a little bit about Medio Camino, the work. Uh, I kind of talk a little bit, but it was a bit too general, so I don't know if you have like something to say about it, something that you would like to, because I also was kind of talking about the idea of the landscape, the movement, uh, this kind of unfinished Latin American modernity, so I don't know, like something? Uh, yes, uh, now first thank you for the invitation to, to present the video there. Uh, actually this morning Facebook remembered me that was uh, three years back in time when I start uh, this uh, whole project. Uh, uh, the card that you saw in the video uh, is, the, is my first card, the first card that I bought. and. Uh, it's a very special car for for the industry in my country. The, that car was the first ensembled car produced in Ecuador okay. uh, during the 70s in uh, in a period uh, that was called the oil boom during the dictatorship period of Rodriguez Lara in Ecuador that uh, runs from 70s uh, uh, till the end of 80s. So this car uh, uh, was called in other countries a uh, basic transportation vehicle. That is a generic car of, of, of Vauxhall Motors and General Motors uh, that comes through with this uh, idea of a cheap car that, that could be assembled in, in any country with a very basic uh, producing system. Uh, and in Ecuador, the car uh, uh, was charged by this nationalism of that time of the of the dictatorship government, and uh, it was called Andino, like Andinian car. So yeah, the project consists in in drive from my capital city of Ecuador, from Quito, uh, try to get to Cuenca city, where was taken the Biennale of Cuenca. Uh, at that time, uh, but I, I take off the, the gas tank of the car and yeah. uh, I try to, to ask people to help me to pull the car. Uh, so yeah, it was, a, it was a long journey that, that took me to find the solidarity ways or other ways to, to pull the car with, without, without, the, without an engine, without gas. And uh, just like I have, I really have like the, when I saw the work, I was wondering about how, how difficult it was to take the car from Quito to Cuenca, like with no, with no engine, like people really helped in that way or? 
No, the, the cool thing is like uh, the people are super helpful here in Ecuador. So I, I found that people when saw you in these conditions of this old, old car, uh, they they start like giving me a hand to, to pull the car. And uh, I feel that the solidarity of people are a great characteristic of, of, of my land, of, of my country. So uh, I don't have uh, any plan when I start like uh, uh, getting inside the car and start like finding ways to, to pull it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was, uh, was really impressed when when people start like reacting and obviously saw the car parked uh, without possibilities to to work. Uh, so I found the yeah I found that people are amazing in, in that way to to help the uh, uh, stock car in the in the highway. You have this also this kind of like cinematographic approach to the to the work, right? It's something that you also have been working with cinema and festivals and so on, right? Just like maybe a little bit mm -hmm. about that. So. Uh, yeah, but, uh, a few years uh, before I run this project, uh, I start working with documentary film or some approach uh, with my sculpture practice to to film the process of construction of some. Uh, of the way of producing of some of these pieces, yeah. And uh, after that, uh, for for the specific uh, case of, of Medio Camino, uh, I I am really thinking about the cinematographic display and the idea of a of a film that could be in the in the half uh, in the in this gap between yeah the fiction cinema and documentary. Mm -hmm. Cinema, so yeah, I use this kind of uh, cinematic approach to, to record my great because I'm interested in this this gap between this these these two genres of, of cinema documentary film and, and fiction film. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Adrian. Yeah, and just thinking, Catherine, are you there? Catherine, hi, no, Catherine is not there. Jasmine, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, I, I think that we cannot hear you. Can you talk again? No, we can't. We, we just see you very well. Now I think that we can hear you. Talk. Hello? Yes. yes. Uh, OK, so we were talking about uh, with Adrian about this kind of cinematographic uh, approach to, to, the, to the work, and this, this one. And then I, I was telling a little bit about uh, this kind of work, uh, relate, your, your work related to like this kind of panoptic streaming that you have with this algorithm uh, in different parts. So it's kind of this infinite loop in time with, uh, with the work. So I don't know if you can say just a, a bit about it, about the project, something. Well, it started out actually from my previous research where I was really digging in seven in general, um, and when I knew really good that you are in a way the boss that you know, decide the center of the earth, you place yourself in the center. As looking into the future, I saw this interesting we have the infrastructure of the internet now because it doesn't have. To uh, just, just mine. I, is your connection kind of working well? We, we can hear you, but not that, not that good, actually. Should I call in again? I think that it's better now. Try again. <laughs> Where did you lose me? No, right? Yeah, l let's try. Let's try. Now that uh, two of the guys are off, so. <laughs> Anyway, so I was interested that the internet doesn't have this clear center with this more scattered network. And during the time I started developing the work, yeah. a lot of um, terrorist attacks happened. People always these live streams with the terrorist attack, and then you see it happening as this very sort of immediate thing. So um, with, we started to create a new type of 
actually transports you through the site in the way that I'm doing now with you. You can see the whole world full in real time. Okay, okay. Okay, I think that, yeah, we kind of got a little bit. We're going to uh, wait a bit and try to... Manuel, are you there? Hi. Okay, Manuel. Um... <laughs> Hola. Um, okay. So I don't, I don't know if you can just tell us about uh, the lake. I was telling the people that it's this beautiful, small lake in Guatemala called Lago de Atitlán. Uh, and it has this kind of strong indigenous tradition related Hello. to Mayan culture. And then you do this I... exercise of drawing, like dibujando en el agua, drawing on the water with this uh, canoa. So just tell us about that, the clothes that you're wearing, or yeah, like to maybe to contextualize, dar un poco de contexto a la gente. No connecting. Uh... Manuel? Uh, se desconectó, no sé. Ahora te escuchamos, we can hear you. Ah, ok. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, no sé si puedes dar como un poquito de contexto de la pieza. Like a little bit of context of the piece, like of Mayan culture in your hometown. Uh, lo va a hacerlo en español. Ok, he's going to do it in Spanish. I'm going to translate. 80 y 90 en, en Guatemala. Eh, estaba el apogeo del conflicto armado, ¿no? Entonces eh, es eh, la, la guerra interna. So Entonces, in Guatemala war, was this armed conflict and the internal war. Guatemala, porque o sea el, el que estaba gobernando en ese entonces era un militar, ¿no? Entonces eh, pues hubo mucha masacre, mucha desaparición, tortura. Okay, just stop there. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so there was in Guatemala this dictatorship in the 70s and 80s, and this kind of uh, strong repression against uh, indigenous communities especially, so there was this kind of polarization between militars and guerrilla army. Uh -huh. Eh, entonces, eh, esa época fue muy, muy fuerte y lo que yo hago es seguir contando la historia, ¿no? Pero no, o sea, no, no utilizando como la información inmediata, ¿no? La información amarillista también de la violencia, sino que eh, utilizo como recurso, eh, como elemento del agua y empiezo a dibujar encima del agua okay. con un elemento que es muy importante que es el cayuco. Ok, so the things that, uh, I'll try to, um, the, the two sides in the armed conflict in Guatemala, as I told you before, were 36 years of internal war and the guerrilla and the militars, right? So the, the thing with this piece is that the indigenous, in a way the indigenous Mayan communities were always in the middle. So they participated sometimes on the military side and some other times on the guerrilla army side. And what Manuel is trying to do with the piece is kind of address to that polarization, not through this kind of political pamphletary discourse, but more related to um, to the lake and to the things that are he, he's close to. In this way, uh, the canoa, the name of this little, yeah, I don't know how do you say that, that is just uh, uh, in the lake of Atitlán. Ajá, ¿algo más? Eh, sí, entonces lo que hago en el performance es cambiando, eh, el, utilizando el traje ancestral y utilizando el traje militar, ¿no? Entonces eso... Hago énfasis eh, en, 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 en exactamente lo que pasó en, en nuestra comunidad, porque eh, en nuestra comunidad fue reclutado mucha gente eh, con los militares, o sea, los entrenaron para luego re, los okay. regresaron a las comunidades para asesinar la propia comunidad. Ok, ok. So, so the act of drawing on the water is related. To, to the idea that he's kind of trying to heal a wound 
uh, related specifically, well, parentheses, in Guatemala there are 24 different languages, uh, and it's a 50 million population country, and uh, each community have like a very different political structure and linguistic, li linguistic structure. So Manuel in this work is trying to address the specific history of his hometown, where many of his of the people of his family and, and around were uh, recruited uh, to, the, uh, to the army, to the Guatemalan army, right uh, army. Okay. Okay, Manuel. Ajá. ¿Algo más? Sí, otro detalle es el cayuco, cómo rompe la, eh, el agua también, toda esa, esa geometría que forma el desplazamiento cuando va pasando el cayuco, ¿no? Entonces, esa, esa parte es muy importante porque es eh, a todos nosotros, eh, en Guatemala nos tocó diferentes formas de vivir la... Like okay. Interna, no? okay, okay. So uh, it is kind of, uh, of uh, the flowers that are on the ship is this kind of ofrenda, this kind of offer to the, to, to kind of the spirits of the lake and, uh, and how the, sh the this little ship is breaking with the water through geometrical kind of, uh, this kind of ab geometrical abstraction on the water. Okay, Manu, gracias. Um, <laughs> I don't know if someone wants to, because now we lost communication with the rest. I can try to call, but I don't know if someone wants to say or ask something about it, about the, about with, to them or about anything else. <laughs> Pierre, yes. I want to ask about this one. Okay, okay. Oh, it's just the guy that is, uh, uh, he's from Costa Rica. Uh, and he's doing this, uh, he has this stencil on his chest that is the uh, Central American map, and he's pointing with his finger to the Costa Rican part of the map uh, that is the kind of the white, uh, whitest country in Latin America. It's this kind of middle class with country with no army. So uh, kind of referring to the politics of blanquialization of like the Latin American states. That, that wasn't uh, my question, actually. I was wondering why. Oh, okay. Why this, <laughs> this thing looks like an uh, Icarus falling down with really little little wings, his legs, and uh, yeah. obviously, um, whatever it's called. Okay. Um, is it by, by uh, like randomly, or is it on purpose that it looks like this falling angel or Icarus? Uh, I don't know, because that, the, the first part that you pointed out, it's Guatemala. Uh -huh. like this, Those are the wings. Yes, it is the part, what matter part of Central America. So that part that he's pointing out is, in, is Costa Rica, actually. But I don't know that we could. Ask, but that's the form of the map. Yeah, but we can ask him. Yeah, we'll be nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can tell him. Yeah, someone else? No, no, no questions. Okay, so I think that, yeah, if no one else is there, I think that we can kind of close. Um, yeah, maybe just to, to, thank, uh, to thank Jasmine and Manuel and Catherine. I don't know why this, the connection went off. And thank you to every one of you. Uh, you have the info of the videos anyway on the pages. Um, and we can just keep with the conversation with coffee or something stronger later. Thank you. Thanks to you. You're, you're right? Okay, thank you.